Welcome to the Army Roundtable. Today is the 4th of December 2019 and I uh, have a special guest, Mike Schwartz. Uh, I've known Mike for a long time and uh, it's nice to finally have you on as a, a guest speaker, Mike. So nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, really looking forward to it. Yeah, so uh, just before we go too far into it, just a normal disclosure that Aramir is not a broker, dealer, or investment advisor. This is for educational purposes only. Options, features, and Forex involve risks and are not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And uh, for personal use, if you want to read the whole thing, just pause the, the video or go to the bottom of any of our web pages. So with that, I will pause the recording while we... Uh, Okay, we're back with uh, with Mike's screen. So we're, we're going to talk about weekly credit spreads today. So uh, again, thanks, Tom, for inviting me here. Um, Tom and I have been speaking for uh, quite some time, um, and I've written recently a blog about uh, the credit spreads and how the environment's changed. And, um, you know, a little bit about my background uh, before moving forward. I've been trading for 20 years. Actually, now it's 20 about 22 years, I can't believe it. Um, so I've been through a lot of change over the years. I've always traded credit spreads. Um, I like the simplicity of them. I like to keep things simple. Um, and uh, on top of that, um, some of you might n know me from some other um, webinars I've done uh, in, for John Locke, for example, as I uh, was trader of the month, uh, trading the bearish butterfly. And I've written blogs for both Simpler Options and uh, for uh, one other site, which I won't mention. But anyway, so I've been around the communities for quite some time. Um, but I thought this would be a good time to talk about uh, credit spreads again, due to a lot of the changes in the industry and uh, Hopefully everybody will learn a little bit uh, from the presentation today. All right, and why aren't we? There we go. All right, so go. changes in the options markets have, you know, major changes over the past 10 to 15 years that have made this much more appealing and available to traders of small accounts. Again, all these changes benefit everybody, but it really, uh, really uh, brings in the small account trader, um, making this viable for them. Lower commissions, many more expirations and smaller strike widths provide, um, as I said, a compelling market for all traders. So let's talk about commission changes, which is probably most, one of the most profound. Um, before, typically when I got into this, uh, we had a $4.95 per trade commission plus dollar, dollar fifty per option. Um, and then uh, more recently, um, you know, it had gone down to people had been able to remove the uh, per trade uh, structure, but we're paying about a dollar fifty to you know dollar. Obviously, it's lower if you have a, a much larger account or if you're doing a lot more trades. But in general, for most of the folks that I talked to, they were trading in the buck to buck fifty per option range. Today, um, with the recent changes due to Robinhood, now brokers are charging uh, typically a maximum of sixty five cents per option. Robinhood, however, still remains the only broker that I'm aware of um, that has no charges for options whatsoever. There is one other, um, but they require a $10,000 minimum account size to trade any kind of option spreads. So I won't bother talking about them. Uh, trade Year also um, has a, a um, a way to get unlimited trades, but you pay a fixed monthly fee. But even that uh, is pretty minimal. Even that got uh, reduced recently. I think you can get it for as low as like $20 a month or $30 a month and then get unlimited trades with no commissions. And then Tastyworks um, throws another uh, little variation in here where they only charge you on the way in. I believe their commissions, um, like a dollar, a dollar twenty, you'd have to check that, but you're paying only one way in, no way out. So the bottom line is commissions have fallen dramatically um, and we'll see how that uh, benefits everybody. 
Expirations, when I got first got into the market, Tom, you can probably relate to this as well. Um, before, there were 12 monthly cycles only. Today, now most stocks and indexes have weekly expirations offering 52 um, different cycles to trade. And both the SPX and the Spider offer three uh, cycles per week, if not more. When you get into the quarterlies and things like that, you can actually have more than three expirations per week. So it really um, uh, offers us uh, more of a closer to a day trading environment, which has the advantage of being able to trade uh, on a much more frequent basis, allowing you to compound your returns. Option strikes this is another big one. Strikes were typically five points apart when I started, which means to get into a trade, you needed a minimum of $500 to play. Today, strikes are now as low as 50 cents. Um, so in other words, with a $50 account, you can actually put on uh, a, a trade today, which was definitely not available to you in the past. And there are uh, quite a number of stocks that trade with $250 a dollar and 50 wide strikes. Um, and that list is growing every day, which again, gives you a lot more flexibility and there are some advantages, other advantages that I'll go into of having these lower strikes in combination with lower commissions. So comparing the old to the new, as I was saying before, you had a $500 minimum to start the trade. If you had the old commission structure, you'd have about $695 cost um, total going in, which is if you went in and out, in other words, didn't let it expire, you had to overcome 3% in just the fees just to break even. Today, it's possible to trade with a, with only $50 and, for example, with no fees at Robinhood. If, however, you do trade with somebody other than Robinhood, which most of us do, um, you're looking at a $0.65 cent, uh, per option for a round trip to 60 So for 50 width, it, you know, you're still talking about a 5% fee to cover even with low commissions. But when you think about this, when it, and this is why I really started to get exciting about this. We, we've known about weeklies for, you know, they've been around for a while and everybody said, oh, hey, if you can make two to 4% a week, look what you can actually do. But you still had, uh, all brokers until Robinhood that you still had to cover. Um, in this case, it's only 5%, but if you look at a dollar, if you had a dollar um, commission or, you know, your, your percentage that you had to cover was much higher. Today, if you bring in a dollar credit on a 50 wide spread at Robinhood, you're making 2% or just $2 on a one width, on a $1 wide, $2 on a $100 and you're making two percent there so again I, in this environment if you were to trade with someone like robin hood with zero commissions your ability to make that two percent uh, you know goes through the roof especially with a smaller account um it, it's, it's pretty compelling and i've got an example of what i've done i did open up a robin hood account and we'll talk a little bit about that um and my results so let's talk strike width. And this is one that I've been very, very passionate about. Uh, and I've studied this for many, many years. And there's always been a lot of discussion regarding what is the right width for, you know, all types of spreads. But in this particular case, I'm really just focusing in on credit spreads. From an ROI standpoint, I have found out that the smaller the width, the greater the ROI, especially for five wide or greater, where the commissions have less of an impact. As you do get smaller uh, than a five wide, so going down to 250 um, and lower, obviously the commissions then become a greater percentage of the trade, and thus um, the benefits of going smaller when you t include commission um, do start to, um, let's say, not necessarily always make a smaller width a better ROI but again you're trying to overcome you know these these percentages as you get smaller and smaller um, which makes it much more difficult but 
the, the, here's the bottom line. There hasn't been that I've seen any tool that I'm aware of that really kind of look, really looks at this. Um, and as I would say recently, we've seen folks that have, um, you know, talked about other strategies, for example, uh, let's talk about naked puts. And this has come up many, many times, many different, you know, forums and discussions about, hey, if you want to trade naked puts, they're great, but most people don't have a way to trade naked uh, because their account size, they don't have portfolio margining, so they want to control margin. So to emulate as close as you can a naked put, they'll make the width as wide as possible. But once you make it a spread, it's not as simple as just saying, let's make it act like a naked put. And I'll show you an example of what I mean by that. Um, so I built a spreadsheet, which hopefully, uh, Tom, let me know if this comes across. Okay. Um, I'm going to move it. Yep, I see it. Okay. So what I did is I built a spreadsheet. This has, for example, Netflix. I'm looking at the puts right now. I'm starting the strikes at 300. And I'm going to do, let's start with five wide. So this is the current week expiration, two days to expiration, and we have a five, 10, and 25 wide strikes. This starts at the 300 strike and goes down from there. So for a five wide, what this is showing you, the raw without a commission at a 65 cent commission is 16.4%. But when I add one commission, it goes to 16, if I assume I'm getting in and out with say uh, five cents to exit or whatever, this is what it drops with two commissions. But you can see right off the bat, five wides getting 16% return, 10 wides getting 11.6%, 25 wides getting 7%. So going back to that naked put example, you might be emulating the naked put because if the credit for this one option is a dollar forty-seven, and you're getting a dollar forty-two. You're definitely getting more of a credit versus the, you know, um, versus this. But the reality is, is you're only getting seven percent for the risk you're putting up versus sixteen percent. So psychologically, I, I totally understand the argument that, hey, let's try to emulate a naked put, but financially. I would much rather do a five wide and get 16% than do a 25 wide and get 7%. Um, if we go down to 250, okay, it goes up to 20, uh, uh, close to 20% ROI at the money versus 12%. Now, the farther you go out of the money, the differences become smaller and smaller. So you do have to take that into consideration. The other thing that I thought was interesting that I look at is if you just go out, compare this week's expiration versus next week's, right? So at the money, this, you're, this is saying that we're con with only two days left, with only 22% of the time remaining, this has 66% of the value of one week out. So it's really holding its value. 53%, 41%, 30 So you can really see how the weeklies, um, you're, you're just getting a lot more juice for a lot less time. I mean, the, the, yeah, the amount of theta that you're getting over two days versus what you're getting even just seven more days out is just unbelievable. So it really shows you the power of, of using weeklies. Um, and then if you want to look at something like, um, and let's just say, if you went to zero commission, let's try that again. Yeah, so 0.65, yeah, 19%. And then if you go to zero, 20.6% on a two wide. Now, if we go to something like Roku, so 
So we'll start that at 145 and we'll do one wide strikes. Okay. So something slightly out of the money uh, with zero commission, you're getting 35%. If I change it to 0 0.65, you know, it drops to 34. So when we start going out of the money, you can really see some differences. Right, there's a 2% difference. And again, on a weekly basis, you might not think that 2% makes a difference. But again, what I would suggest is we'd all fight strong, hard to get 2% a week on a consistent basis. Um, and you can go way out of the money, um, even with 0 0.65, you know, um, you can get far out of the money and get a really decent return for a week. Um, now, but look at how much it changes uh, if you have to get in and out, right? So I'm changing from 8.7. And again, this is assuming I get out at a five cent credit. So it's really going to dig into that. But anyway, I use this tool on a, you know, a daily basis when I'm trying to determine the best strikes to trade and to see the differences in the wits um, to see if there's any, any aberration. But in most cases, Again, you can see how the smaller width is giving you a higher return. And in this case, here's an aberration where it's not. Uh, you can see that if we go out to nine days, you're getting slightly better with a five wide, you're getting better there, there, and there. So there are cases, it doesn't always work. Um, and it definitely works typically when you're doing five, 10, and 20, that five is, is providing the best ROI, but hopefully, just this little review um, gets people to think slightly differently and reconsider how they're looking at spread widths. So there are other considerations, uh, the impact of the Greeks, the wider, uh, the wider the spread is the flatter the T zero, uh, which means lower losses when the trade moves against you. Also, when it's wider, you have, so you have a lower delta, uh, hence, um, and a lower gamma, hence the flatter T0. You do have a slightly higher theta. Uh, and then with, however, the way I view this is that if you're doing a two or three day trade, you're really trading a binary event. Um, you're either going to expire outside of the money um, or you're not, and you're gonna close out the trade. So it's a little difference maybe uh, of thinking about it, but again, if I am trying to choose a strike that I do not believe is gonna be hit um, in, in a day or two, we are talking about a binary event. There are trade-offs, but what I can do, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, again, let me know if you could see this, Tom. Yeah, it's the option view. Okay. So what do I mean by this? So let's take a look. Uh, here is, let's. So if we did on, this is Apple. And if I do a one wide, now I'm doing four because I'm putting in the same amount of capital in this particular, to do an analysis correctly in this particular instance, to see the T0 lines, you need to compare um, the same amount of capital, if you will. So if we analyze this trade, that's how our T0 line looks like. So then if I widen it to four times that, so, Analyze that and then superimpose. You can see the wider spread has a flatter T0 line. So that might make it easy for people to understand. And, and obviously, on the downside, you're going to lose less if it immediately attacks you. And on the upside, you're going to make money a lot quicker, allowing you to exit earlier if you want. So I understand there are trade-offs from a Greek perspective. There's no doubt about it. And everybody needs to make their own decision. But 
again, if you believe that this is a binary event that you're trading, and I would suggest that a one, two, or three day trade, even a seven day trade is pretty binary in nature, that I'm looking for the strongest ROI um, that I possibly can. What do I typically look for? Short duration, seven days or less. Most typically I look for three and two day trades. I'm looking for momentum stocks, stock that show a lot of power, one way up or down, smaller strike widths, returns of 5% or greater-ish. I have gone for less for sure. Get in, get out, and repeat often. So definitely have learned that on you know, if you're given profits quickly, um, take them and run versus, uh, you know, versus leaving them on. And I'll talk a little bit more about how that's come to bite me. What else to look for? Assess market direction, up, down, or sideways. You, it's a little bit trickier with one, two, and three day because you are, you know, in general, more impacted by daily swings, which, you know, um, like we've seen in the last couple of days, we've had a pullback and a major uptrend on almost every single time frame. But I still believe it's important to be aligned with the overall market at all times. Uh, look to place trades below areas of support or above resistance, including I look at the 50-day moving average. So I am always looking at the charts and comparing the strikes that I want to get in at, or especially the short, and how it compares to um, uh, the underlying stock chart. Trade small and trade often. Have a lot of diversification as you can. Um, compare widths like we did with my spreadsheet to see which is the best area or the best um, spread width to trade to get the best ROI. Know when you're wrong and get the freaking heck out or just by reducing risk only. So I'm not a huge proponent of rolling and adding capital. Um, when you roll and add capital on a small account, you're adding more risk, not, you know, so it just doesn't make any sense. And if these are high probability trades, if you keep your losses small, your ability to recoup those losses um, should be just normal part of business. Um, so in other words, if we risk just $2 to make one, that would require a win weight of uh, 67%. Um, and then you're getting profitable above that. And these should win if you're doing things right, you should be able to get that over 70, 75, 80% um, without a lot of, um, you know, um, variability if you, if, you know, once you practice and practice and practice and do this, just like any any routine. Exiting trades for profit. Obviously, we can let it expire. Uh, I have something called the 50% rule, which is I look to take profits. If I put on a trade today and I get 50% or greater of my credit in that one day, I'll consider taking it off. And I'll also, but I'll also look at commissions impact. But typically, regardless of commissions, I'll take it. I'll take the money and run. Um, or you could. Another method is uh, sometimes um, I'll go for some of the profits. So in other words, if I get in for eleven and I'm able to exit at six, I made five percent on a one wide. Again, that's you know using Robin Hood's numbers with no commissions. But uh, the point is still valid. Um, taking a partial profit with this low commission environment allows you to scoop two, three, four, five percent or greater in a couple of days. You do have to consider pattern day trading issues if you do exit the same day. Oh, and I did, but here's one very cool thing that I learned uh, in the past month in talking to Scott Sheridan. So, Scott Sheridan is the CEO of Tasty Works. He works with Tom Sosnoff. And they're doing some very compelling things uh, talking to the regulators. And one of the things they are trying to get the regulators to understand is that um, we should uh, eliminate the pattern day trading rule because it just doesn't make any sense. 
So they're they are working on that, and hopefully, um, I don't know if it'll be just them or industry wide, but uh, I think it would be great, obviously, if they can get rid of the pattern day trading requirements for um, us options traders on the stock side of things. Would be would be awesome. Um, and then the one thing I'll show you um, with my Robinhood account is that trades can move against you quickly. Um, and I got spanked on two trades, both of them just taking my um, daughter and dropping her off at school. And the time I left at about 7.30 and the time I got to the office by 8, um, I saw winners turn into losers. So to give you an example of what I've been able to do, again, this is just using a Robinhood account. Um, let me bring mine up. So this started back here with $100. Um, let me go to a year so you know what I'm saying. $100. That's what I opened the account with. And currently it's at 146. So I'm up 46% since I started this, which was July 19th. Um, this first trade, I had a full boat winner and I was going for three or four percent and then it just rocketed against me uh, and got out, uh, still was able to get one, about one percent, um, winner, 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 winner. And then this was my big, big hit was Roku moved against me and it moved quickly down. Um, but that was a winner. This was Friday when it happened, uh, expiration day. Um, and obviously I've been able to recover that uh, back to new all time highs. But I should have, if I was sitting on top of it, exited this at a profit. And even though, and this was a profit. So bottom line is, even though there is some you know, drawdown intraday um, or end of day, uh, the bottom line is all of these uh, were profitable and should have been, if I had been on top of them, um, I shouldn't have had any losers so far. And I've done about just eight trades. But again, um, I've, all of these trades are using, uh, uh, we're using one wide, you know, uh, a dollar width. So $100. So I'm using up all of my um account size obviously now i've got some powder behind me I've got 46 dollars of extra cash i'm trying to get into a roku trade this morning as well um some of these you just end up sticking with because uh, you get to know them pretty well other real world considerations uh while smaller strikes do allow you to uh, uh, allocate lower dollar amounts per trade um, you should use this for diversification. Obviously, I'm not recommending that somebody start um, unless if, if they only have $50, obviously, that's all you can do. Um, but the bigger the account size, the better. If you have a $1,000 account, then one $50 wide trade would be 5% of that, assuming you're risking it all. I suggest starting out with a, the size of at least $1,000 and trade small and and you know, trade a few different names. Don't put them all in one trade. In other words, I'd rather have three $1 wide trades on than um, one trade with three contracts on. I, I much prefer diversification uh, because again, these should be very high probability trades. Um, also zero commissions doesn't mean zero fees. So I did notice that at Robinhood, uh, when all was said and done with one per, uh, couple of my trades, I was noticing I was missing eight cents here, five cents there, three cents there. When I reached out to them, they said those are exchange fees that they pass through. And I said, that's great. Why don't you show me that as a separate line item? And the response was, we just don't do that. <laughs> so obviously you get what you pay for meaning if you're not paying anything in fees um, or commissions you're getting the absolute worst bare bones um, you know uh, brokerage platform 
known to man. And uh, I'll show that. Um, let me bring that up because I do think it's worth seeing. Uh, they do have a, um, a uh, and, you know, mobile app, but it's really not that much better. So, for example, if we did want to trace a place, a Roku trade, um, we go into Roku, trade Roku options. And this took me forever to kind of figure out. And let's say we want to sell a put spread. So, if you want, Tom, let's see what time we got time here. So, let's take a look at Roku. And it's currently trading at 148. So, since we're doing zero commissions here, okay, so I can get 7% ish. If I go to 137 strike. So I am looking for a credit of about eight cents. So let's try to see if so 137. So if I wanted to do the 137, so there's no way to say I want to do a spread. Um, so you go to the 137 and you say I'm going to sell the put. So you click on that. And then you would have to say, I want to buy the put. And this is what I can't stand because it resets back to the center price instead of leaving you where you were. So I click on that. So I continue. All right. So I'm going to do one contract. Um, what did I do wrong? Seven, one thirty-six. There we go. Eight cents. All right. So I'll do one contract. Point oh eight. Review order. Uh, so I've got a working order. So let me show you how working order works. Here's my account. You have to go to history to find it. I mean, it's just terrible. You're, I'm sitting on my home screen. So if you're looking for something that says open orders, um, there's nothing. This, this is the entire platform. It's, it's just absolutely terrible. Uh, so you go to history. I've got this credit spread placed. Um, so in this case, I was doing the 33.32 for five cents. I'll cancel that order. Go back to account, oops, the home, sorry. Roku, options, try that again, put, sell, sell the 137, buy the 136, continue, one, I'll still try eight cents, see if we can get filled. View the order, submit, done. Um, again, there's no bells and whistles. You do get an email and you can go into messages and you can say we received your order. But I mean, you talk about bare bones, you are getting bare bones. So if you do, Consider using something like Robinhood. I suggest you have another account um, where you can use a much better platform like uh, Thinkorswim. Um, I'm not sure what the minimums are these days at Thinkorswim, but it's obviously worth uh, maintaining an account there. Um, so Tom and I are going to be discussing coming out with um, uh, a service to deal with this, uh, to provide, um, show you what I'm doing We'll look at uh, trade seven to two days to expiration. Look for opportunities uh, every week to allow for compounding growth. And I like to keep trades simple, have a simple plan. Uh, as I indicated with, you know, when I was driving my daughter and how two trades turned against me very quickly, 
this does require some level of market availability beyond anybody. Whenever you have a service that's dealing with credit spreads uh, this close to expiration, you can't wait for that email to tell you to get out if the market's going against you. Uh, by the time you see the email and are able to do something about it, uh, it might be too late. So, you know, want to be very upfront about that, uh, regardless of doing this yourself or, or using some sort of service to get trade ideas. Uh, we're uh, going to look at tracking returns with both 65%, uh, 65 cent commissions and zero commissions to show you the impact of even what 65 cents does. And I'm looking to grow the account based on ROI and uh, quickly move profits. So uh, we'll be coming out with more information on that soon. And that's it. Short and sweet. It is short. Uh, we did, there were a couple of questions. Um, sure. Uh, David just asked, will you consider using SPY or QQQ? Sure. Um, you know, with SPY and QQQ, so um, the pros, definitely with SPYs, I haven't looked at Qs a lot, but the advantage of SPY, obviously, is now you have three um, expirations um, per week. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think the Q's offers that, but for me, I'm also looking at good ROI on that. So if the ROI um, is compelling enough, then the answer is yes. I'll look at anything. And, and, you know, I'm of the, you know, my scanning abilities are only as good as the various tools I see. And, and hopefully we can create a community where people see other um, opportunities, you know, they spread the word. And I'll take a look at anything for sure. I see Lewis says, do you pay fees on indices only uh, or are, are there also fees for stocks? There are fees for stocks. I haven't traded so the, the well, I won't say the one negative, obviously we've already seen a uh, you know, with their platform, how big a negative that is, but they do not allow you to trade uh, cash indexes like the SPX. So that means the trades that I have had, I mean, in, in theory or in reality, I should have all round numbers, um, right? And I don't, I, in my account, uh, where is it again? Uh, my account is 146.41. That means somebody's taken some pennies from me. And those were all stock trades. So yes, you will get dinged, um, get dinged for stocks as well as indexes. But again, you cannot, you can trade uh, QQQ, Spiders, IWM. You can trade all the ETFs you want. You cannot trade cash indexes. And then uh, I see Paul raised his hand. So Paul, I'm going to allow you to talk if you want to. So uh, I'll just unmute you if I can. All right, well, it looks like I can't unmute Paul, but if you like to, just uh, unmute yourself and you can ask a question. And then uh, somebody else asked, uh, what's your win rate? So again, you know, my win rate's over uh, 80%. In this case, like I said, all of these trades were were, were winners, you know, the, but the reality is, you know, I had to drive my kid to school and wasn't smart enough to have a stop or, or exit. So doing the service, I'll be much, much more um, quick to take profits, right? I, I have no problem banking two, four, five, ten percent quickly and being in cash than having market exposure. So, you know, the pro, the pro, there's, Win rate is a tricky question, right? Because to improve your win rate means you're also in increasing your risk. Hey, Mike, what do you mean by that? Well, if I have, let's say if I have a trade that starts off a dollar wide and I'm trying to get, and I put it on for 10 cent credit or you know, $10 credit on $100. If I get out quickly, um, with a $2, you know, so I, I buy it back for eight bucks, I made $2. And I can, and you could do that just for daily fluctuations. I mean, we've all seen that. The price could fluctuate within a day and that spread could be taken out quickly. However, if it goes against me, right? If immediately I put it on and somebody downgrades it and it goes against me and I'm using a 
original two to one. So I'm getting out with a $20 loss. The downside of that, of that win rate perception is that you're changing the, the average size of your winners versus the average size of your losers. So it, it's a balance. And so as human beings, I, and I just did a, I just did a presentation for somebody else on trader psychology, everything in life we are, we, have, we do is about being right. And so we're trained that being right all the time is the most critical thing, but I would rather, you know, trading isn't about being right. It's about making money, right? So there's this balance about having a great win rate versus, um, you know, you can have a great win rate and lose money. Um, so it's not just about the win rate. It's about your expectancy and making sure that all of your winners added up together are going to blow away any of your losers. And I'd rather take quick, small losses knowing that I have a high probability chance to make them up very quickly. Long-winded answer for a very short question, but hopefully it makes sense. Yeah, I've seen trading systems where the, they have less than a 50% win rate, but they still make money overall because they take little risk, but their gains are a lot bigger. Right, and the, and the, and the biggest, uh, well, one of the, the, the big problems with high probability trades, again, uh, I'm very open um, and, you know, people get into iron condors, you know, and especially if they're doing a monthly and they, you know, after six wins in a row, seven wins in a row, they're like, honey, I, I found the holy grail just to get spanked twice because even though they might have rules that say get out at two or three times your initial credit, once you have six wins in a row, you're starting to feel invincible. And then you start throwing out your rules because you're like, well, all, all my prior, prior trades have won. So this should win. So, well, and if you're doing a bullish strategy in a bullish market, then you think, yeah, let's sell the house and mortgage it and quit my job. Exactly. So to me, I, I you know, I learned to love my losses, um, follow my rules, love my losses, move on to the next trade. Um, Cause I want to be around for that following trade. <laughs> let's see. Mark asks, what's the typical Delta of your short strike? Um, you know what? This isn't there. Uh, it's a, it's a good question, but this isn't necessarily a Delta trade. Um, actually, it's not a Delta trade. Um, you know, I'm looking at more of support and resistance uh, regardless of the Delta. So wherever the Delta happens to be, it happens to be. That's it. Um, so I'm just looking for, um, am I, you know, far enough away from current price with some level of support on the chart typically for me uh, and getting a decent enough return to, to decide to get into the trade and the deltas uh, are going to be fluctuating, but I don't look at this for this particular trade. And Gary says, um, this is earlier on, he said, uh, but don't you also need to consider that the narrow width has higher break even point, which reduces win percent wider spread has lower break even point and hence higher win percent. So, okay, that's, that, that, that's, uh, so there are trade-offs, okay? There, so, so the first trade-off for me and the most important trade-off for me, and I, I'm not suggesting this is right for everybody, but if I think about this in a process, I am putting on a trade, whether it's a naked put or a wide spread or short spread, assuming that I am right, I'm out of the money. So I'm putting two things typically, not always, but typically in my favor. I'm putting direction in, I'm making a directional bet, and I'm going out of the money, which is also putting some level of probability on my side with the assumption that my short will not be attacked. So based on that, based on the fact that this is a one, two, three day, maybe even seven, it's still what I would consider a binary event. I'm either right or I'm wrong and I'm getting out. So um, I, uh, I'm not quick enough to think about the break even comment, but the, the, the point is this, there are trade-offs, 
but you know you you can't if ROI right. Hopefully, we can agree that you know in this case it's not, let's go to you know again a let's do a five wide to make it more understandable, right? I would suggest to you that twenty seven percent return is much better than 11% return, regardless of the break-evens. And also, I'm not holding it to expiration. I believe the comment indicated, you know, break-evens. Break-evens are based on holding something, closing your eyes, and all things being equal, she's 100% correct. If you're, and this is, you know, like a tasty trade kind of thing. Originally, they just said, let the odds play out. I'm not that guy. I'm not going to sit here, close my eyes and hope that whatever happens, happens on expiration. So you could be correct on the expiration graph. Let's take a look at um, option view again. Um, so you're right. No, actually, here's the expiration break even on the shorter width the expiration break even is actually higher. So that assumption was incorrect. But the point is, is I'm not going to stay and let it, let it, you know, falter and get past my short strike. I'm probably going to be out before that. Um, so again, I'm going for ROI period. And again, this is a bigger example, but tw I would always say that 27% is better than 11%. Absolutely. Well, I think we're out of questions. So uh, I guess anything else you want to mention about this service that's coming up? You know, it's uh, obviously um, what I want to do slightly different, although I can't say I've been involved with a, a ton of the various services, but a big portion of this is I'm a huge believer of teaching folks to fish as much as possible and making it as interactive as possible. And I think that's a benefit of a community. Um, so uh, I'll be talking with Tom about how we can make it as interactive as possible, you know, with the, maybe with the Slack groups and things of that nature, um, because opportunities happen all the time. And if you're not looking at the right stock at the right time, uh, you know, you might miss a, a great trade. So the more of us that are get involved and look for these opportunities, um, the, the better we can make everybody. Um, so, um, you know, I'll look at, you know, working again with Tom on possibly bringing some of these tools uh, to the folks that, uh, to the folks that join the service. Um, I've got other tools um, as well that look at, um, you know, how much, actual decay you're getting and which strikes are best to sell. Um, so I've got a lot of other tools uh, that I've used with spreadsheets and stuff. And again, uh, what I want to do is build a community, uh, you know, so we can all, all benefit from it. So. Well, good. I guess uh, we'll flesh out some of this stuff and then send out a, uh, um, a little form for people to join it as a trial we'll probably do it for a few weeks since it's a weekly trade so you go through a couple of trade cycles and see if you like it or not um oh so I, I think we should have that ready you know fairly soon so i imagine sending a week, an email before the end of the week let people sign up fabulous all right and if anybody has any questions along the way send them on to tom or whatever and he'll forward them on to me and uh you know uh Again, this is about the community. I think a lot of people love weekly options. I know a lot of people have small accounts. And as, as people have seen, um, even with a couple of big screw ups, uh, you know, I wish I could say I'm the greatest trader in the world. Um, you know, and obviously you're taking on uh, some level of huge risk. So I'm not suggesting that I would trade the same way with a $10,000 account. But it is kind of fun, and I'll continue to trade this uh, Robinhood account to see, you know, get it up to. I did get into that Roku trade, so we'll see how that uh, ends out working out. But if I let it expire worthless, there's another eight percent 
uh, in one week. Um, so it's it's pretty cool what you can do with a Robinhood account. Um, and just you know, I I think for some people it might work be worth you know doing what I did. You know, throw a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars at it, and see what you can do to be because it's really going to force you um, to follow your rules on exiting. No doubt about it. Right. And uh, I noticed I did set up an email alias. So if you send an email to Mike at Mike at airmere.com, it'll go right to you. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think that's it. Um, we're still under an hour, which is great. So we'll, uh, we'll flush this out. Maybe if you have time, we can talk right after this, Mike, on Skype, and then we'll uh, flush out some of these details and get it out to everybody. Yeah. Did Paul get his question in? Um... Paul, no, um, I don't think so. He he lowered his hand, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe he hit the wrong button. All right, all right. Well, I want to make sure everybody's taken care of and gets their questions answered for sure. You bet. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for joining us, and we will uh, send more information, and I'll put it in the recording, too, uh, on, the, on the description uh, for when we uh, actually get this set up probably in the next couple of days. Um, but thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks, Mike. Really appreciate it. It was good to see you again this summer and look forward to seeing you again in the spring. All right. Take care. See ya.